Hey guys, Robert Ham here with Robert Ham Photography, coming at you with just a couple of first thoughts and impressions today about the new iPad Pro. I'm going to compare it to the Microsoft Surface Pro 3, which is a device I currently use. Now, since I don't have any actual iPad Pro to compare myself with, we'll just kind of make some assumptions about the specs that were put out and the keynote that was shown today by Apple. Let's get started. Now let me go ahead and clarify a couple of things. Uh, I'm a photographer. I am a creative. I have a creative mind. I think and I, I put things together. So I need adaptability and flexibility in, in what it is that I do. If you're out there in a creative field, then you are going to appreciate when we talk about this iPad Pro and kind of contrast it to the Surface Pro 3 and talk about how innovation and different things happen. And when we contrast it, I think you're gonna be in the same camp that I am, and I'll put it out here now. I think Apple has made a huge miss this time around. So when we come and actually look and see what Apple's got going on in the mix, we can find out that they're bringing in, of course, their happy-go-lucky iPad. Now let's come on over, over here, and let's go over here to the, did I miss it? iPad, yeah, right there. Now I'm recording this on my uh, Samsung Galaxy uh, S6 Edge Plus. However, I also have an iPhone 6 Plus. So I, I use these two devices interchangeably and between the two, uh, they, the, both of them feel very similar. Samsung, not only in its form of flattery, but also copyery, if you let me use that word, has made a phone and an operating system that acts very much like the quintessential iPhone, a simple, easy to use experience that's also customizable. So I enjoy using it. So if you're on the phone between Android or iPhone, if you're on the fence between Android or iPhone, I'd say that the two in the iPhone 6S, uh, or not the 6S, the iPhone 6 Plus and the Galaxy uh, S6 Edge, those lines are the closest that we have seen Apple come or Samsung come to iPhone uh, software and hardware. Now that's gonna be important when we talk about this iPad Pro. But let's talk about some things just on its own. It is thin, okay? I love this idea. My wife actually wants one really, really, really bad. And of course, I'll get her one because, you know, she wants one. I want one of these too. But this is not going to be the device that's going to allow me to do any kind of production. So for me, um, in fact, I, I probably actually won't buy this device for myself. I'll probably buy one for my sweetheart. 12.9 inches in a four by three ratio is amazing. If you sh shoot a micro four thirds camera, such as a Panasonic or an Olympus, the OMD like the EM5 Mark II, or the Panasonic GH4, GX7, these images will come across in native resolution with no scaling full screen on your device. If you shoot a camera that, pardon me, <coughs> If you shoot a camera that's got a um, three by two ratio, which is pretty much any other camera that's out there, such as Canon and Nikon, Sony, Fujifilm, then images will not display in full screen at the same ratio. They'll have little black bars depending on how you hold the device. And that's important for when you're showing your clients and customers work. Of course, you could, you know, you could zoom in so that it appears to be full screen with just a little bit more zoom than is actually on the device itself, but you're not going to see a, a full screen photo. It won't matter when you zoom in one to one, the pixel density on this thing is, is up there. I think, don't quote me, but I think it was 268. So we can actually find a little bit more. Let's find out some of that right now, but like 268 um, pixels per inch, you know? I love the pricing, 128 gigs for 949. Um, also with Wi-Fi and cellular right here. This is excellent, especially because Apple's including some extras. So these are things that I'm really excited about. And I shouldn't say they're including some extras, but they recognize you're gonna wanna buy some extras. With having this much screen real estate, you're going to want to purchase something. You know, got a 12 inches, 12.9 inch screen, just a pound and a half, Wi-Fi, you know, pound point six, you know, 12.9 inch display, and 264 pixels per inch. That's that right here, this is excellent. If you've already got an iPad, you know, the iPad Air 2, this, this isn't such a huge jump. Of course, the processor is a big jump, but this isn't so huge. Here's the main thing, and this is the crux of my entire argument. Uh, 
If you are a creative like me, you're not running Illustrator on this, period. You will run all kinds of drawing apps, sketchbook for iPad and all that other stuff. You're not running Adobe Illustrator. Here's what you will run. You will run Lightroom. Guys, this is Lightroom Mobile, okay? This should turn right back around for you. This is Lightroom Mobile. Now this is exactly the type of Lightroom that you're going to get on your iPad. Any model iPad, go download, download iPad, um, Lightroom Mobile, and this is what you get. There is no full Lightroom. Here's, let me, let me share with you what that means. You, you wanna take an image, um, okay, this cool image right here. We tap on it, here we go. You can crop, and once it, it takes it a second to load all the different uh, icons, that's something else you gotta think about. See how long it took for this to load? True, I'm running on my uh, Samsung device, but it still took that, uh, that time, it take that time anywhere. So we got a crop, we've got some detail modes, like uh, this cream of tones, split tones, right? Uh, you got some uh, specialties, like clarity and everything else. Of course, you can do your own color in black and white. You can add some effects, like a vignette. Okay, great, you see that? You can actually see that's changing. Okay, great, perfect. Come right over here, you've got your white balance settings. You can do a custom white balance, you know? Go ahead and select it, or uh, a selector right here. Boom! Come over here and get a, a balance off of whatever I want. Okay, that's that's fine. That's fine. This is all well and good. We can auto tone. That's great. We can we have contrast adjustments. Yeah, that's it though, guys. There is no full Lightroom support. Okay, so if you're creative on the go like me, and you're trying to get items up there, this is a great place to go if you've got a good input to begin with. But if you need to uh, clone anybody out, or if you're trying to create something, if you're not working with a pretty much finished product from the get-go, you're gonna have to revert back to a desktop. And that's my point. You gotta go back to some kind of laptop or desktop. Now, here's what I'd like to show you. Okay, and this is why I'm, I'm excited. And this is something that also concerns me. The Microsoft Surface Pro 3 is such a nail in the coffin of Apple's creativity and innovation. And I say that not with skepticism, but with fact. I use the Microsoft Surface Pro 3. I have a MacBook Pro with a Retina display. I've got several iPads in the house. I've got six phones right now. I've got the Galaxy S6 Edge Plus. I've got the Galaxy S6. Edge. I've got the Galaxy Note 5, I've got the iPhone 5S, I've got the iPhone 6 Plus. I got the phones, they're in here right now. Okay, so I've got all kinds of different tech. But this device right here, the Surface Pro 3, does everything I need it to do. And it's easy to use, especially with Windows 10. Windows 8 was a little iffy, I gotta give you that. Windows 8, I didn't particularly care for. $7.99 is not gonna get you what you want. So let's go ahead and do the price comparison. In order to get what you want, we've actually gotta bump this guy up. I don't want all these little offers. So I'm just trying to show you. The Core i5 is enough to get you what you want, but it's not going to be the very best. We actually need to come over here to the Core i7 model. If you're running at least the Core i7 with eight gigs of RAM and a 256 gigabyte hard drive, you're gonna be, what, $13.99. Remember, Apple was about 1300 bucks with all the accessories. This does come with a pin, so you got the specialized pin that comes with it. And no, the, the Surface Pro 3 pin by Intrig does not have tilt control. It does not understand tilt accuracy like the new Apple pin does, which allows you to tilt your pin off the 90 degree axis from the device screen to allow for shading or shader effects. Think about brushes. You know, you don't just use a brush perpendicular. So no, this pin does not do that not with the Surface Pro 3. So there's there's a plus, but it's still a great pin, just like the other pin, it's good. this stylus is gonna be great. But you don't even have the other accessory on here, I, this, this keyboard cover. Add another 130 bucks for this stupid thing. I hate mine. I use it, I've come to like it, the trackpad right there, that little trackpad is nowhere near as sensitive and accurate as it needs to be. So $1,399, $1,400 plus 130 bucks, you are at, uh, 13, 14, 15, 50. You do happen to have twice the storage as you can see right there, which is pretty cool. All right, so if you followed my channel, you'll know a couple of things real quick. Let's see if we can find out over here, where is it? Uh, Robert Hand Photography, great. So you'll know that I've reviewed the Surface Pro 3 
pretty, pretty handily. And what I'm telling you is that with the Surface Pro 3, you can do all kinds of stuff. We'll just let this play for a second. We'll see what pops up. Okay. Let's move into some down here. So you can actually see Okay, so the point here is to showcase the fact that this is actually running Lightroom, okay? Now, watch the full videos. There'll be links in the description and you can find them on my channel to actually see exactly how this works. On the same token, you can actually go and see I do a full Lightroom, where is it? It's right here. Yeah, uh, Lightroom Mobile. Here, here you go, right here. X100S and uh, X100T photography on Lightroom Mobile. So here I'm showing you what Lightroom Mobile looks like with these two devices, okay? You've also seen a little bit here. So we're gonna go ahead and stop that for a second. So what we're trying to showcase here is that although Apple has really, really, really brought, uh, brought some, something new to the stage, this is not the innovative Apple like we're used to. I was hoping for the just one more thing to be that it was going to run, that this was going to run a desktop class architecture. Now, here's some reasons why it doesn't. Um, Number one, Mac OS X, you know, is not outfitted for a touch interface. Just like when Windows tried to go touch with Windows 8, 8.1, that was horrible. It took Windows 10 to come along and, and begin to fix it. So you can't just as easily port an OS directly over to the uh, uh, iPad Pro. That's why it still uses iOS. However, there are some similarities. Uh, between iOS and Mac OS X. They're both a Cocoa-based operating system, and Cocoa is the developer term for the Unix kernel that Mac uses to develop their software, okay? So they're both based out of the same kernel. So basically, iOS is running a form of Mac OS X um, at its basis kernel, right? But it's the iOS has gone on its family tree in a separate position towards touch finger friendly uh, nature. and. I have to say, uh, Apple has definitely got that right. So here, you know, in a consumption device, you're going to have a great experience on this 12.9 inch display. Uh, it's it's gonna work seamlessly. The battery life is ridiculous. 15 seconds gets you 30 minutes of use out of the pencil. And they gave the pencil a lightning connector. So you can take the cap off right there and you can flip it around and actually charge it from, I guess we're gonna get that. You can charge it from uh, the lightning connected port on the iPad Pro, which is absolutely great. I like that a lot. But is it gonna be helpful? Well, that, that remains to be seen. If you can envision a workflow where you can use a, a, um, the, the Lightroom Mobile if you're a photographer, uh, then sure, uh, you definitely can use this. If you can use, if your photography can allow you the, the quick, easy upload, especially with the 4G connection that's gonna be built into these things, so that you can snap a pic, your pic from your camera can wirelessly sync it either through an iFi card or its own app over to um, the, the iPad and then upload it online after some editing and sync back to your Mac at the house, but just as easily allow for immediate sharing. Well then, yeah, that's great. But if you need something more than that, for example, I'm not gonna edit wedding photos on Lightroom Mobile. There's not enough room on Lightroom Mobile for me to do it. If anything, I'll take shots that I've taken at a wedding, allow it to sync through my Lightroom Mobile, even with the Mobi Pro, uh, uh, the iFi Mobi Pro card, so that the digital negatives sync, and then it just gives me a secondary backup. So as I'm taking pictures with my card, I then have the ability to begin syncing those photos on over to my computer through my phone, because the digital negatives, the JPEGs, and the RAW files are both syncing over through the card. Now that's something that's a different story, but if you have an iFi Mobi Pro card, you can wirelessly sync your uh, DNG files or RAF files or ERS files uh, over to uh, your cell phone. Um, if you want to, if you're using a cell phone or if you're using an iPad or, or whatever you're using because it allows for that. However, when we're looking at it right here, these aren't images that um, a wedding, that, I mean, these are pictures of my son and it's okay for me to, to take this image and bring it over here into Lightroom Mobile and then edit it and put it online. And although this was a great input, I was shooting on JPEG here and just having fun at the park. There's no, no pressure. But if you're doing produ productive work, production work, and you've gotta, you've gotta nail the shot, you're gonna be shooting in RAW and Lightroom Mobile's not going to give you what you need in order for it to, uh, to it's not gonna give you the processing power you need, uh, should I say.
So when we think about these two devices, they really fall into two separate camps. The iPad Pro, even with the added functionality of the Apple Pencil, is still a consumption device. Whereas the Microsoft Surface Pro 3, because it has the ability to run desktop grade programs, gives you more in the feeling of productivity. Specifically, if you're a creative type, which is what we've been talking about this whole time. What I'd like to think a little bit more is that Apple had the opportunity to really wow consumers, to really wow us. They had the opportunity here to give us just one more thing and bring back a little bit of that Steve Jobs appeal, uh, that excitement, but they missed big. It could have been done in other ways than just making a larger but thinner device. The pencil was a great, great attempt at it, but the pencil won't work with other Apple devices or at least hasn't been announced to work with other Apple devices. So you can't just add the additional functionality or productivity of the pencil to an older generation iPad, even one just as old as a couple of months. So what we really have here is a lot of the same old new stuff, but still same old stuff. And that's where I feel like I was really let out. Hey, listen, this is just my thoughts. Sound off in the comments below with what you guys think. Once again, I'm Robert Hamm, and I'd like to thank you for watching. Cheers.